but I'm a cheerleader released in 1999 is a hyperbolic satirical romance that follows Megan, an all-American cheerleader who is sent to the conversion camp True Directions by her parents and her friends due to her fitting several lesbian stereotypes. You've been trying to make us eat this tofu. You don't have any pictures of guys in your locker, just these. These. There she falls in love with the bold and rebellious Graham. This film is one of the early representations of lesbians in cinema, and I think it gets it right while simultaneously being years ahead of its time. The one aspect that I feel defines this film's satire is its mise-en-scene, where Babbitt plays with color theory, costume design, and staging. The intense blues and pinks both represent the stupidity of the categorization of masculine and feminine into colors which was established from commodification, but also represents the artificiality of heteronormativity. They're constantly trying to prove that being gay isn't natural. But look at this world that they've created. It's almost reminiscent of Barbie. It's nothing but fake, suggesting that no matter how hard you try with extravagant set design and costuming, you cannot change who someone is. You can only change the way they perform, but not who they are. Babbitt also highlights the general stupidity of conversion camp and the irony of it. I mean, to put all the gays together, all emotionally damaged and raw at a critical age of youth and to have them sleep in the same room. I mean, what did they think would happen? Teenagers have desires and teenagers act on these desires, especially if you tell them not to. But through subtle dialogue, Babbitt also suggests that homosexuality is not a choice. Like when Joel says that he's always wanted to be straight. I can't wait to be straight. I've always wanted to be. Which suggests that no matter how hard we try or how much we wish we were someone else, like Graham says, you we are, are who we you are. are. The only trick is not getting caught. Another humorous bit of irony is the shock therapy. Each person is given a personal electrical shock device. Does this sound familiar? Well, you shock yourself when you get bad thoughts. So they've basically been given a you-know-what when they have uh, homosexual thoughts. And as far as I know, this doesn't get rid of the thoughts, but only amplifies them. But Babbitt also mocks stereotypes. Generally, they meet stereotypes, but in a humorous way, like they're making fun of these stereotypes. And not all of them hold true, like with Jan, who isn't believed when she says she's straight simply because of the way she looks. Ironically, she looks the gayest, but is the straightest. I <laughs> mean, just take a look at yourself. I mean, I like guys. I can't help it. Here, Babbitt suggests that we aren't defined by stereotypes, and again, we are who we are, and we love who we love, regardless of how we look. Additionally, Babbitt highlights the absurdity of the categorization of masculinity and femininity into roles, such as wood chopping and football for men, and cleaning and apparently sipping for no women. No more sipping. Jug it like a man. But ironically, by learning the roles of women with other women, it sort of becomes a display of lesbian relationships as there are no men in sight. They're basically learning to be lesbians. And thus again, this reflects how counter-effective and idiotic conversion therapy is as it always achieves the opposite effect as we can't change who we are. However, it's often not only others trying to change who we are, but ourselves. This film blatantly tackles internal homophobia. I mean, they got one of the many queens of gays being RuPaul to act as a converted gay man. I mean, he's a good actor, but this was not believable. But it's not supposed to be. I myself was once a gay. Now I'm an ex-gay, Megan. I was absolutely shocked when I saw his beautiful face appear on screen because the irony is just so perfect. But this reflects how founders and drivers of these camps can often be gay or at least have gays in their life, like ironically Mary, who has a son who, well. <laughs> Out for but Megan is also clearly struggling with internal homophobia, constantly fighting her desire to be with Graham. I wanna do that again. Megan is taught to be disgusted by these desires, and this has driven her internal homophobia, that it is wrong to be gay. Graham somewhat teaches her to be herself and to understand that you cannot change who you are. However, in the end, it's Megan who declares her love for Graham, as Graham decides to graduate and conform to her parents. Though through this, Babbitt also reflects the two different types of parents and how this can impact the children. Megan's parents treat her with love and are not fully antagonized, as they are simply misguided and often portrayed as just ignorant. But they do make progress and end on a good note, suggesting that ignorance can be changed and parents can make progress. However, there's also Graham's parents who are not simply misguided and ignorant, but are filled with hatred, which is also a very common experience in the LGBTQ plus parenting world. Babbitt shows both of these sides. But it's also important to note that LGBT films are protest films, especially during this period of homophobia. But this fight for human rights is reflected through the gays who teach them to be themselves, who are dressed in military uniforms, suggesting that they have to fight for freedom and learn to fight because of the abuse and fear they constantly face for being who they are. 
I think this also subconsciously impacts the audience as we respect soldiers who fight for the country. And here they're fighting for this country's freedom, as freedom cannot be fully achieved unless LGBTQI members are free to be who they are. One of the critiques of this film was that it wasn't quote-unquote deep enough. It was surface level and lacked true drama. But I think there is power in humor. The most comedic and joyful films on the surface are often the ones which hide the darkness beneath to create an even more powerful and subconscious impact through the juxtaposition of a light tone with a dark message. This is similar to the film Brazil by Terry Gilliam, which highlights the dystopian impact of capitalism through this exaggerated, humorous, and unhinged set design, like But I'm a Cheerleader. By creating an absurd depiction of conversion therapy, which highlights its stupidity and irony, Babbitt takes the power away from them. It makes homophobic groups look pathetic and stupid, and likely makes audience members reflect and acknowledge how stupid they look. If you were homophobic, would you rather be portrayed as powerful and feared, or stupid and pathetic? And I love films that are split in reviews, because that means that the film has taken a risk and it's worth watching because people feel very strongly about it. It may lack certain subtleties, but it's not trying to be something it's not. Babbitt has successfully created an exaggerated, absurd, and mocking satire that seeks to expose the stupidity, ignorance, and irony of the anti-gay movement, which was still around in the 1990s, and still very much is today. But go watch this film if you have any interest in comedy or lesbians, because this film is great at both. But thank you all for your continuous support. If you'd like to support me even more, you can become a sponsor for me on Patreon. That would help me continue making these videos forever. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.